Hello and welcome to another AFCB TV preview show here at Vitality Stadium. Matchday commentator Chris Temple joins me and we'll be going through everything that's gone on here at AFC Bournemouth in the last week. Let's take a look at what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that brilliant 5-0 win at the Amex Stadium. We'll also be looking ahead to next week's documentary release, Minus 17. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Fulham here at Vitality Stadium. Well, first, we'll start back at last week and that 5-0 win over Brighton. Let's remind ourselves of the highlights. So this season, Brooks stabs it through, Gosling square for Wilson, Callum Wilson pulls it back to Gosling, who finds the bottom corner! Not much cheer on the road for the Cherries recently, but Dan Gosling sends those fans happy. Born with a patient build-up, pass their way through the middle. Corrected that stat today as Wilson plays it through, and now Fraser's trying to nip through, and Fraser shoots for goal! What a finish that is from Brian Fraser! Once again, the Cherries counter-attack, and Fraser smashes it into the top left corner. He seemingly had it all to do from where he was, wee man, but he had it all to do, and he did it. Time Mepham and Smith between them there as a challenge goes in from Knockart and Adams is going to his back pocket here, Kevin Friend, and it is a red card for Anthony Knockart. In, but King holds him off, and now a little ball where Brooks takes over into the feet of Fraser. Back to David Brooks. This will be brilliant. This is brilliant. Bournemouth at their best here in Brighton. Scintillating football, finished by Brooks, game over, Brighton nil, Bournemouth three. On the left-hand side now, Fraser just about keeps it in, Solanke's with him, Callum Wilson wants it too, Brooks is arriving, driven into the box where Wilson takes a good first touch, not a bad second, and a fine third, and Bournemouth have an excellent fourth. Callum Wilson joining in on the attack now, again Ryan Fraser a contributor, another assist for him, Wilson finishes it, and that sends the Brighton fans home with their tails between their legs, Brighton nil, Bournemouth four. Which suddenly sounds manageable, doesn't it, as Lerma picks up the ball, and Lerma drives on through the middle here, he's going to get ahead of Duffy, is he? It's going to run instead for David Brooks, a real chance of a fit, it could be Stanislas, it is Stanislas, it is five! It gets better and better at the Amex for the Terries. Brighton torn apart, cut to ribbons and finished off. 5 0. Well, Jefferson Lerma, they need to go and congratulate him. And what a magnificent tackle to block and win the ball back. Well, five different scorers saw us pick up all three points there. Chris, it was quite an afternoon, wasn't it, at the Amex? Yeah, um, it's nice to be standing here for a weekend and say, cool, didn't that go badly? But didn't that go badly for Brighton? It went really well for Bournemouth. It's just, I mean, you can't, you can't really quantify how polar opposite those performances are, the Burnley and the Brighton performances. Seven days apart, same players pretty much, given I mean, one or two that we'll come on to, you know, introducing to the team probably had a bit of a key impact. But but yeah, absolutely everything fell right. And it was, it was back to the Bournemouth that had such a scintillating start of the season uh, again the context is that Brighton were hopeless I mean they were really bad um, but they were made to look that bad by Bournemouth and the way they played first half hour was you know a bit cagey two teams who obviously haven't been on a great run and the first goal felt important um, obviously Bournemouth got it um, Dan Gosling popping up at a good time with his, his first uh, of the season first for what 14 months or so and I think even the first goal just signified the confidence that players are suddenly are suddenly found in, in the week leading up to that game because there were some great decisions made in the build up to the goal Callum Wilson could have easily shot and you'd expect sometimes a number nine to shoot in that situation but he made the, the sort of percentage decision which was to lay it off to Dan Gosling and that wasn't the only sort of decision that, that was correct in the sort of goal scoring uh, moment if you like because two or three of the other goals as well had were really nice build ups and the key pass at the right time was the right choice so um, yeah it was it was just absolutely poles apart from the Burnley performance and for the couple of thousand Cherries fans that went and we saw some some great access you know Michael from your media team behind the goal got some great footage um, from the from the game so yeah it was it was really, it's really nice to watch those moments back for, for fans as well. And of course five five different goals five different scorers as well which would have really pleased
for you, Teddy Howe. Yeah, and, and you know, some of the players that maybe haven't been firing on all cylinders and, you know, with the greatest of respect to the, the Ryan Frazers and the David Brooks, it's been a long season. David Brooks, as we heard the manager say, had an injury and took a bit of time to come back, but both contributing assists and goals as well. Um, even from the alternate angle footage, I was still trying to work out whether it, David Brooks actually put the ball into the net for his goal or whether it was a Lewis Dunk own goal, but we'll give it to Brooksy for sure. Um, but yeah, obviously Callum Wilson as well, getting uh, getting one up. It was a great, great finish as well. Um, I suppose only Joshua King of the sort of front four, if you like, uh, missed out. But again, he played, you know, a couple of key passes in the build up to goals as well, where he was unselfish. So, yeah, really nice. And nice for Junior Stanislas to come on as well at the end and, and, and get a goal because obviously he's had a stop start season as well. So, yeah, hopefully now that, that does bode well for, you know, the, the right players coming back into form. And we're talking about the attacking thrust, but of course, we've got to mention the clean sheet. Um, Arta Boric and Steve Cook came back in. Big call from the manager, you know, not big in terms of the choice. I mean, I stood here last week, as you know, and said that I thought Asmir Begovic would play. So I got that completely wrong. Happy to fall on my uh, sister of sword with that one. But um, for Eddie to change it back after a couple of games, I think, you know, we don't see him do that very often. But Steve Cook, we've got to mention you know, him. He came in and uh, captain's performance. Uh, who knows how ready he was to actually play. I think adrenaline against his old club um, and everything else that comes with it and the, the comeback that he's had. I think that powered him through the game. I reckon he was probably uh, out on his feet by the time he sat on his sofa on Saturday night. I would have said that, but um, he made a huge difference. He looked like he'd never been away, did he? And as well, we have to mention Dan Gosling as well, someone that's you know played frequently this season, but hasn't always been the the first name we pick out on a on a Friday morning. Yeah, and again, I mean, you could, you could pick out everybody actually made a contribution in the game as well. But Dan Gosling, as you say, you know, had the captain's armband for a little bit during the difficult spell, relieved of those duties with with Cookie coming back. But yeah, I thought he was you know it was really part of the platform. Him and Steve Cook, and you know. The reshuffle back for it was yet another new defensive unit combination. I think that's up to about 23 or 24 different back fives, if you include the goalkeepers, um, this season. Um, and I think, you know, Eddie was quite creative in the way that he, he got sort of the four most informed defenders into the team. Moving Nathan Ake to left back, you know, it's, it's not an obvious thing to do is to move your best player out of his most comfortable position. But I think what it did, does do is it enables Chris Meppham to stay in the team, which I think, you know, he has to do to keep developing. At this stage of the season now, safe, he's getting onto a little bit of a role he's impressing everybody how quickly he's taken to the Premier League a bit like David Brooks when he settled straight in as well um, so it's great for him to be able to continue those games we all know what Nathan Ake can do at centre half and I'm sure he probably enjoyed in a game like that he probably enjoyed being able to bomb up and down the left hand side so um, yeah and, and obviously you know Nathaniel Klein has, has found it tough at times you know so I think on form Adam Smith moving over to right back was was probably the right thing so yeah credit again to Eddie for, for shuffling it around and coming up with the answers and we have to talk about that red card as well for Anthony, no Anthony Knockout it was an awful challenge wasn't it I mean awful is being generous it was an absolute shocker I mean from our commentary position we were we're sat right above the tunnels um uh, the commentary you heard on the highlights and we it's about as far away from us as it could be so when we had the benefit of two or three more looks at that it just got worse every time you looked at it particularly the angle from behind the goal um yeah I mean absolute red mist Glenn Murray's reaction which quite a few supporters I know picked out on the on social media when it was shown of sort of putting his his hand up to his face as if to say what is he doing um so yeah straight away it was a red card thankfully it was right under the nose of the linesman who will have helped the referee out there as well just an awful tackle and very very lucky for Adam Smith that he was able to sort of slightly ride it slightly hurdle it um obviously it caught him but you know luckily if it had been a standing leg or or a lot more sort of definitive contact then that could have been a, a real bad one and all in all it was brilliant to get that other that another away win of course just our second one in, in 2019 after Huddersfield so yeah. brilliant for confidence yeah of course you know beating two struggling teams is, is one thing and you know the, the the negative people will say well you've only beaten two teams who are struggling but at the same time clean sheets in both and of course through 40 points now to up to 41 um you know all of a sudden now it, it, things are just a lot rosy it's, it is only one game so you know, here against Fulham tomorrow, it's going to be very important to keep that sort of uh, momentum rolling forward now to, to finish the season on a high. But that result at the time they got it after the couple of performances they'd had was absolutely exactly what they needed. Absolutely a brilliant game at the Amex. Now then, as you may have seen, AFCB TV are bringing out a documentary to mark 10 years since The Great Escape. It's coming out on Thursday, absolutely free on AFCB TV. But here's a little look at what you can expect. The breaking news in sport that AFC Bournemouth had lost their fight to avoid going into administration. Starting the next season on minus 17 points, you thought, well, this is it. There isn't going to be a Bournemouth anymore. There wasn't going to be a great escape season. It was the end of the road. 
I think a number of us thought, well, the writing could be on the wall this time. This might be just one deduction too many. He was always aware of the situation, you know, the ramifications of what could happen if we, if we did get relegated to the club. The journey began with Ed. Free kick, Pittman 30 yards out ahead. Oh, terrific! It's a screamer from Brett Pittman! Fletcher, left footed yeah. strike! It's into the back of the net! The Bournemouth fans hail the Messiah! It's one of the best moments in my career, still, still now. Our attitude was, are these the big boys? Like, come on in, let's, let's have it with you. Still running, Mosley. Low yeah! shot! Oh, Mark Mosley! It's into Pittman's path once more. Still he goes out, two players. Oh, oh, what a goal by Brett Pittman! It was difficult times for the club, but, you know, they, they still showed up in the numbers and backed us when we needed them. You rarely get their moments in, in your life. When you look back and look at it from start to finish, what an achievement it actually is. If there's ever a time in my 20 odd year career to score a goal, it has to be now. If everything had been easy at the start, I think, well, the story wouldn't have been as good. Well, a season full of drama there. That will be coming out on AFCB TV completely free on Thursday. Chris, uh, a season 10 years ago, what are your memories of it? Well, it's, I'm looking forward to watching the documentary first and foremost because you know, often the, some of these moments they pass you by. Um, I, I wasn't the regular Bournemouth commentator, then I probably did a handful of games in that season because I was presenting our, our programme on BBC Radio Solent. But the couple of games that I did do uh, that actually were quite crucial, I seemed to get parachuted in for, for those ones. Uh, I did the Dagger Number Away game on the, uh, the, the midweek night when Mark Molesley popped up with that, that last minute goal. And um, my standout memory from that, as well as the goal, is Jason Tindall coming on um, in the times when they, the, the club couldn't fill the bench, they had nobody fit to, to play. So so Jason Tindall had to be, I think he'd been registered earlier in the season, I think, actually, um, and just came on. I think, I can't remember who went down injured, but he had to come on. There was no other option. And he just came on. And he'll tell you he played this cultured, right-footed, you know, swerving ball down the right-hand side. But basically, I think he just lumped it forward. Uh, and that, that basically created the goal for Mark Molesley. And I just remember those Bournemouth fans on a, a pretty grim Tuesday night in Dagenham. I'm not sure there's, there are many great Tuesday nights in Dagenham, but that was particularly grim. Um, but not after Mark Molesley put the ball in the back of the net. And the other game I did right at the end of the run was Chester away. Um, um, which again just had a, a really big feeling about it which set up the Grimsby the Grimsby game here so yeah it's going to be absolutely fantastic to, to relive it I guess through the uh, you know 10 years is a long time and you think where this club is is now so that'll be a great night coming up and we've got the premiere coming up next week down at the OD and a lot of ex-players coming as well and it'll be really nice for them to you know be reunited with their ex-teammates 10 years on yeah and of course a lot of them are still around the club in various capacities you know you think of big Steve Fletcher and, and Mark Molesley and the likes of Brett Pittman who's always back here watching even though he's uh, you know down the road at Port with these days as well and of course I think for the for the manager and for, for Jason as well you know this this was right at the start of their managerial journey um, you know coming in halfway through that season um, so again just to bring back a lot of the faces that they won't have seen too much of as well um, all in one room will be will be really nice and yeah uh, if we can stop Steve Fletcher talking about his Grimsby goal then that's the biggest challenge I think of the evening <laughs> <laughs> and we've also got a handful of season ticket holders from that season coming down to the Odeon as well for them that will be a really nice opportunity to relive it and you know be in, in, be in a room with all their heroes and, and remember a key part of AFC. Yeah, and you've got to, we've got to remember how big a part the fans played back then, you know, in the, the troubled times when, you know, it was it was shaking buckets, it was raising money to sign loan players, it was all of those things. Um, and those supporters who went up and down the country who will have been supporting the club for many years before that as well. But, you know, this that will be the sort of, a, I guess, a, a landmark moment for them as well as when the club, you know, right, they survived that, you know, ridiculous points deduction and managed to climb the, the biggest of mountains, if you like, and are reaping the rewards today from that. So, yeah, for supporters today who are watching a completely different brand of football to to what they watched back then and different opponents and you know this ground was probably half empty back then you know there were no 20 south yeah no well. south stand there was probably 25 away fans used to come and watch their team so uh, yeah absolutely everything about it is now the the, the rewards i guess of, of what eddie started and jason started all those years ago well it's certainly going to be a very exciting watch as we said that's coming out on thursday for free on afcb tv so do keep your eyes peeled now then, our attention does turn to tomorrow's game against Fulham here at Vitality Stadium. Earlier in the season, it was quite the day out at Craven Cottage. 
Adam Smith falls over off the ball, but Lewis Cook continues, and now a chance for Wilson, and the penalty has gone down, and Callum Wilson wins the Cherries a best back kick. Of course he does. It's another penalty for the Cherries, and Joshua King is usually the taker. He's not playing. The goalkeeper is Rico, the striker is Wilson, the score is 1-0 to Bournemouth. Rolls it just left of centre, and Bournemouth take an early lead here, and that could be the thing that breaks Fulham's spirit early on. Wilson, goal. Yeah. Good penalty, ones that hit the net always are. I have to say that it's been a really good start for us, the possession we've had and the attacks we've had have looked dangerous. But that was quite a silly cha challenge, rather. A chance for the Cherries, Fraser with Brooks, two on two here, Fraser plays it in, David Brooks for 2-0, it is 2-0! David Brooks seems to love scoring on the road. One at Watford, and now one here in Fulham. And the Cherries, despite probably being second best in the second half, find themselves two goals clear and heading for three more points. Pinnacle, uns unselfish, what a goal. Fulham attacking us, having a load of possession. The lads just combined to win the ball back in half-time. It's Fraser who carries the ball 30, 40 yards. Brooks, he makes a fantastic run and shoots through the keeper's legs. Fantastic goal. Well, what were we talking about before the game, Willow? We heard from Ryan Fraser making the right decisions, unselfishness. That was it there, because he could have gone on himself on the outside. Brooks's run was clever, onside, perfectly timed, to roll it through the keeper's legs. United next Saturday. Fraser plays it through. Wilson to really put it to bed. Right footed, and the Terry's at home and hosed. And it's Callum Wilson for the second time in the afternoon who sends those travelling supporters wild. And once again, Fulham proving their happy hunting ground for the Cherries. Wilson twice, Fulham nil, Bournemouth three. Well, what a strike. I think he's done him on the near post, hasn't he? I know, had loads of pace on the shot. Well, goals from Callum Wilson and David Brooks at Craven Cottage earlier in the season. Chris, that was quite an afternoon, wasn't it? Just like we saw on Saturday. Yeah, and it's, it's a result we referred to a lot because, of course, it was the last away win up until uh, to Huddersfield. The away form went completely uh, into the River Thames after that, unfortunately. But yeah, that was a that was a good day. You know, that was when things were clicking away from home. You know, fresh off the back of the you know the Watford away win as well. Um, you know, David Brooks and Callum Wilson both on the score sheet. You know, it was a, a sign of what was to come from from them this season as well. So yeah, I mean, back then Fulham. <sighs> They've had problems all season, haven't they? I mean, keeping goals out has been the biggest problem and it's, it's a huge transition coming from the Championship. And we saw Bournemouth struggle to keep the goals out in the first season as well because when you, you're playing attractive football, one of the byproducts is that you are going to be more susceptible while you're getting used to this league. And of course, you're up against better players who will make you pay if you make a mistake or you leave yourself too open. So that's been the, the biggest problem for Fulham this season. But yeah, it was a memorable away day and yeah, it's, it's a great ground, Craven Cottage, and it will be a real shame that uh, Bournemouth fans don't get to go there for at least a season hopefully Fulham can bounce back pretty quickly and of course if we can can get three points here we're all of a sudden on to 44 and just one win away with three games to go from from that 47 which is would be our best ever points take. yeah I did say didn't I last week that I would only mention it once more if uh, if uh, Bournemouth didn't get the, the three points last week to try and keep that record points total uh, on on the radar so it is now um, six from 12 isn't it two wins out of four um, would do it um, and you could say that this weekend Bournemouth would have to be favourites to get one of those wins um, you're looking at the other three games now and going okay where's the other win coming from it's looking hard here against Tottenham to say that would be the win. Um, down the road at Southampton, Palace on the last day of the season with two teams with you know nothing directly to play for. Um, at least if Bournemouth are going to Palace with a chance of having that record points total, that will add a bit of interest to the last day. But yeah, bringing it back to, to Fulham, you know, and to the 40 points mark, um, 44 was what they achieved last season. Um, so the, the three seasons in the Premier League, 42, 46, 44, now on 41. It, it's consistent, that is for sure. Um, now everyone's saying, okay, well, what, can you push on beyond that 46 mark, 47 mark? But of course, then you, you are getting up in towards seventh, eighth European territory. So, um, but yeah, just the, the point score looks so much. It's only three points, but 41 just is so much better than 38 oh, in all contexts. Absolutely. And of course, in terms of Fulham, while they haven't had the best season, they did pick up a, a win last week in a clean sheet as well. So something to be wary of. Yeah, I think Scott Parker has obviously been chipping away, trying to, you know, since he's come in after um, Jukanovic got sacked, he, he, he's come in and obviously done a lot of work on the training ground, which has taken a bit of time to, to, to bear fruit if you like but it was a, that's a great result for them over over Everton that you know keeps them Everton within reach of Bournemouth catching them
them as well. So, um, yeah, by all accounts, you listen to the players, you read interviews with the players. I uh, read some thoughts from Tom Kearney last week that they're all back in Scott Parker to get the job permanently and that in the championship with a bit of change of personnel that uh, he can do a great job in trying to get them back up. So, yeah, they, they've just clicked at an, I guess, uh, unfortunate time from Bournemouth's point of view, but Bournemouth have clicked as well. So um, you'd like to think that the Cherries, you know, back here in front of home fans will be able to build on that performance last week. Um, but yeah, Scott Parker, of course, who, you know, has a Bournemouth connection through Harry Arter as well. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's, it's all set up to be a good game and it's good to see someone like Scott Parker as well get a, get a chance in management at a, a pretty big club. And they've got players like Mitrovic, Babel, players that can, can hurt hurt another team if given the chance. Yeah, Mitrovic is, a, is, is one of those who seems to blow hot and cold. You know, he's, he's their top scorer and he's, I think I read a stat, he's right up there in probably the third or the fourth in terms of the number of shots on goal he's had this season without actually managing to score so many. Um, disciplinary wise, he can be a bit of a hot head. He obviously had that uh, incident last week with Gomez uh, of Everton, which Gomez has been has been uh, disciplined for. But yeah, you mentioned Ryan Barbell. I mean, he's come back, isn't he, from, you know, back from his Liverpool days and all of a sudden he's, he's proving himself uh, a useful attacking weapon for Fulham since since January scored and assisted uh, in the game against Everton last week so yeah it's, uh, when they signed him it was like oh yeah he's, he's back in the game Ryan Barbell but um, yeah it's a great signing for them um, and they're they're coming here now with with absolutely nothing to lose they're down um, you know their their points total is is much of a much just now um, in terms of they can't really go any further so uh, nothing for them to lose really um, not too far for the fans to come Scott Parker looking to make an impact so I would say dangerous opponents but Bournemouth from that point of view you know got to be favourites from the way they played at Brighton yeah and talking of Bournemouth coming through that Brighton game with no fresh injury concerns that's really positive of course we saw how how good Steve Cook was coming back from injury too so lots of positives going into the game yeah pretty much everybody that you know has been sort of there or thereabouts is now back it back involved aren't they? there's nobody I don't think left on the sidelines who's not going to make it back this season so um, or who is going to make it back this season rather. So, yeah, it's nice for, for Eddie to have one or two options. Um, the back four, I'm pretty sure he'll probably keep it the same, I would have thought. I can't really see any reason to change anything in that in that team. Um, the one person we didn't mention last week was Jefferson Lerma, by the way, who, who played a part in the uh, the third goal with one of those sort of driving runs. I'm, I'm hoping Jefferson is going to score a blockbuster by the end of the season, by the way, because we've talked about it in commentary so many times. One of these last four games, Jefferson from 30 yards, top corner, make it happen, come on. <laughs> he does line them up, doesn't he? <laughs> he lines he? them up, but not many of them are close. We've only got the diving header at Newcastle so far, but one's going to go in. Well, four games to go and you never know what can happen. That's all we've got time for today here on the AFCB TV preview show. But if you are coming tomorrow, then we hope you enjoy the game. But if not, make sure you keep an eye across all of our social media channels and our website for the latest updates. Thanks for joining us.